Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we're exploring some new spaces on the ship. We are down on fourth deck, all the way forward of turret one. And this right here is the forward armored bulkhead. So we're on the back side of that. I think that's frame 50 is always the uh, armored bulkhead. And then uh, we've got the barbet for turret number one right in there where we'll go in a second. So these spaces are really awkward, uh, hemmed in by the forward armored bulkhead here, which you don't want too far forward of your forward barbette, or else you're armoring a bunch of empty space on this ship. The armored belt behind us curved in at 19 degrees and the holding bulkhead behind that, and the barbette itself, which is round and uh, basically extends to the torpedo defense at the outside of the ship. So, so these spaces are really, really awkward, really, really tight. There's not much you can do with them. Uh, normally, around the other turrets, these spaces are used for 16-inch powder magazines. But turret one all the way at the bow of the ship, it's too narrow for that. We, we could fit a couple 16-inch powder charges in here, but not enough to make this a usable space uh, that's worth putting that many guys in it. However, during World War II, the Iowa-class battleships received a significant number more of light anti-aircraft guns than they were designed with. So these spaces were taken over for that ammunition. The one directly above us, which we covered in, in uh, a video last week, linked in the description below, used to be a 40 millimeter magazine. So down here, we've got a uh, 20 millimeter magazine and some other stuff. First off, the trunk. There's no hoist to get the ammunition out of here to the guns. The ready service ammunition would be stored in ready service lockers by the guns in actual magazines, like, like drum magazines that you load into the 20 millimeter gun. Down here, you've got uh, loose rounds in ammo boxes, essentially. And so they are transported in these boxes uh, from the storage ship onto here from the ammunition ship or the port onto here and then from here to a clipping room where they're loaded into their magazines and then taken to the ready service lockers. So in combat you're not really coming down here uh, to get these. Uh, and if you're in combat, hopefully war has been declared and you're under a wartime steaming with actual ammunition in your ready service lockers. What do you do if you aren't? at uh, wartime steaming. The fleet of Pearl Harbor did not have any ready service ammunition on hand, and so those battleships could not return fire. The people with the keys to the magazines could not, uh, might not have been on the ship or might not have been available, so the gun crews were standing around with nothing to do. In some instances, they're firing star shells at the enemy. Uh, in, in some instances, they're, they're trying to find bolt cutters from a damage control locker so that they can uh, get into the magazine. And you can see that, that, like other magazines on the ship, this is designed to be locked. Well, I've got a feature here that I think corrects that. I'm not 100% sure what it's for, but look at this locked box here with a piece of glass on it and a hammer attached to it. There's not much you could store back there besides maybe the key to this magazine. Obviously, you know that if somebody's broken this glass, then they've uh, gone into the magazine when they weren't supposed to. Otherwise, it is there for emergencies, I think. I've never seen one of these before. Um, but it would make sense with a 20 millimeter magazine. This is your Pearl Harbor's being attacked. We've got to get some ammunition for the guns right now. Uh, but also, if somebody's trying to sabotage the ship, blowing up the 20 millimeter ammo in here is not going to do it. So it's not so hazardous having a backup way in. Another interesting feature of this space is you'll notice I've got a hatch right here. The hatch to get down here is actually offset. And then there's another hatch above us that's offset further outboard. This means that a single bomb 
hitting the armored door at the top of this isn't going to be able to just go straight through this trunk all the way down. So let's head next door into the magazine cooling unit. So speaking of the weirdness of this space, again, we're hemmed in on that side by the trunk. On that side, we've got another bulkhead because there's an actual 16-inch powder magazine back there. This bulkhead's angle and this is curved. Like, what a weird shaped room. What can we actually store in here? Uh, so it's not really being used for much. The magazine cooling unit used to be mounted right here where you can see. And that's one of the things that was taken apart when the ship was decommissioned and mothballed. Um, on the deck, longtime viewers will recognize this as some of the old dehumidification tubing that's run down here. Would have run uh, up to the berthing compartments above us where there was a, a dehumidification unit. Uh, some other interesting features here. We've got sounding pipes to get down to the tanks below us. And we've even got a brass plate over there to sound a tank below this one. Uh, otherwise, that's pretty much everything in here. Let's go the other direction. So this space is really just a vestibule. There, there's hardly any room in here. Uh, it was probably part of the old uh, 20 millimeter magazine. The only uh, really cool thing in this space, which is listed on the compartment checkoff list as the G1 division office, or the turret one uh, division office, the G1 division man's turret one, is these zigzag patterns on the deck. That's the tread pattern of the standard issue GI boot from the 1980s. So somebody's gone and uh, walked through something they weren't supposed to and, and left marks on the deck in here. And there's a couple other places we can see uh, oily, dirty, uh, footprints here. And this may be the G1 division, man in turret one. Maybe these guys were in the uh, turret space where the deck is oiled, where the shells are stored. And so they're walking in here with oily boots. Or maybe it's, it's a battleship. There's dirty stuff around the step in. You'll also notice on the deck here that we've got an ammunition far side sign. Um, that means that there is another magazine under there. Don't weld on this deck or you might be heating up powder that's on the other side of this. And uh, yeah, otherwise this space is pretty unremarkable. If this was once an office, all of the stuff that was in here has since been stripped out, which is interesting in its own right. It's not easy to get a desk or chair or a filing cabinet out of here. Now let's continue into the last space. So here we've actually got a uh, decently sized space taking up the other half of the room. Uh, still not really enough for any significant amount of powder. This is probably where most of the 20 millimeter ammunition was. Um, this is a 20 millimeter round. So you can see it's about the size of my hand. These would have been stored in ammo cans, like I said, and then they'd be taken up to be put in the uh, 60 round drums that the guns actually used. Um, oh, this is one of my favorite things. Look at this. That was an explosion proof light fixture. When they switched to the fluorescent tubes in the 1980s, rather than rewiring that, they just w put the uh, power into the old receptacle for the flash proof uh, light fixture. And they've done that a couple of places in here. It's interesting, in this space on the other side that we were in, it still had the original blast proof fixtures. It didn't have any of these. So the fact that they installed these may, uh, it further tells us that this was no longer being used as a magazine space. Th this had become that G1 office. We've got an unpainted space here, which implies that there used to be like a filing cabinet or something mounted. Uh, interesting, there's no uh, brackets that it used to bolt into. It might have just been sitting there, which is uncommon. But if this is an unauthorized ship off, these guys just claim this space. Um, maybe that's what happened. 
We've got a little bracket here bolted into the existing screw holes and an outlet. So this might have been where the, where the desk was. You might notice the brown paint smeared around here. Uh, that is primer. Probably if the crew had been painting this before the ship was decommissioned, they would have finished painting it. This is probably the uh, folks at uh, Bremerton who were maintaining the ship doing their inspections came in and found this space had a lot of uh, bare metal that was then going to corrode. So they came around and, and slapped all the primer on it. That's just my, my guess. Um, you do see the glow in the dark orange arrows on the deck, which are from when the ship was uh, in mothballs. So that if I am someone who's inspecting the space and I get down here, I'm like, oh wait, where do I go from here? I've got this that'll catch on my flashlight and show me the way to the nearest exit. Yeah, it, it's worth mentioning that by 1951, all of the 20 millimeter guns are removed from Iowa class battleships by the end of that year. So this just becomes free space uh, and battleships always, always, always have a land grab where people are going to try and take over whatever space is available. So it seems like the G1 division, who are really the only guys who would have access to get down here, are the ones who claim this space. So did you notice anything that uh, I didn't talk about? Also, go ahead and check out on your PDF blueprints of Iowa class battleships, uh, which we've linked in the description down below, if there are any other spaces that you haven't seen us go into that you'd like to see. Um, so drop a comment below, other spaces you want to see or things that you notice in here that I didn't talk about. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and our channel. Thanks for watching.